This is Las Vegas Real Estate Now with local real estate expert Harvey Blankfeld. Where we want to educate you about our market, empower you to make wise decisions, and help you engage with our expert contributors. So you get Mike Bonner, uh, who's one of our partners that, uh, at uh, Brown Blankfeld Group at Berkshire Hathaway. One of the things I wanted to talk about today was the idea of purchasing a home for multiple uses. Um, um, I've had clients who come to me and say, gee, Harvey, I want to buy a home. I'm not ready to move into it yet, but I want to buy it now because I think the market's going to get a little more expensive in a couple of years, and I'm getting this call a lot. So I'm going to buy it now so it'll be there for me in a couple of years. But until I move into it, I think i got to lease it out so I don't mm-hmm. have the expense, so I don't have a huge carrying cost. The challenge we face is this, is that very often the home you want to live in is not the best rental financially. You know, when people talk about investing in a property, they're talking about a cap rate or an ROI, return on investment. So if I invest, you know, two hundred thousand dollars in this property, I want to get so much back, so that at the end of the year I've got some money in the bank to show for it. Very often, the, the home that you want to live in doesn't match that criteria. Now, so the so the calculus has to be: Gee, is it okay if I don't make a whole lot of money in the time frame, or as much as I could on another property with this home until the time I choose to move into it, or should I choose another property, buy it, rent it out? And then in three or four years when I'm ready to sell it and buy another property. And the difference is, is that you're carrying, you're moving that equity you've created in the rental property and just moving it into the home you're going to live in, as opposed to just buying that home right now and, and not transitioning. Now, the, the obvious question is, is there's a transitional cost. You're adding in a buy and a sell in the middle of it if you decide to do the rental property first. And the real, what it really boils down to then is, If I buy a rental property and then I have to sell it to buy my real property, is the cost of selling it more than the cost of not making as much money with just buying it right off the bat? Don't forget the fix-up. I mean, when you turn that rental, there's going to be some expenses there. So really what it comes down to is putting pencil to paper. And we talk about this all the time at the office. Working the numbers. Work the numbers. Just work the numbers. So if you if you sit there and you calculate, gee, this this I'm going to be able to baby basically break even on this house of rent for three years, and at the end of that three years, I'll be able to fix it up and move in. That's probably a b- pretty good calculus. That's probably a good scenario to consider. But if you say, gee, I really want to make some money first, then you're probably going to choose a different property and then sell it. But then in the cost of selling, does that offset the money you made? And so these are the things you have to be thinking about. That's why you want a trusted real estate advisor to get involved with these purchases. That always boils down to how much money will I make during the course of leasing it out versus how much, uh, how much money will it cost for me to transition that home and buy another one. Uh, the cost of selling a home is, you know, give or take, depends upon who you use and how you do it. Give or take is around 8% of the value of the home. So if you can generate 15 or 20% over those few years, you may want to do that and you end up with a bigger piece of coin to, to move into. Is, a, is our market, though, in a position to where it's generating that kind of appreciation? That's a great point because we don't know. I mean, it's a, we, we've seen a, a steady appreciation over the last several years. This year, this past year was good. Next year's projected to be good as well. When you see we're selling the same number of homes every month, but then the inventory continues to shrink, it's pretty tough on buyers right now, isn't it? Yeah, it, it, if, you're, if you're in the market to buy a home, uh, you're gonna you're gonna be faced with a lot of competition. That's right. So, <clears throat> one of the things that we like to talk about uh, with our clients is coming forward with your best possible offer. Yeah. Just put your best foot forward. Um, go be all ready in, from be a ready financial perspective. Have your loan letter, have your lender prepared and ready to go. Present a positive loan letter. Yeah, you've gotta you've gotta find a way to be at the top. You know, when when a, a listing agent is presenting offers. You've got to make sure that your offer is, is one of the in the finalist. One of yeah, the- and what are sellers concerned about? They're concerned about two things mostly. One is, is the amount of money they're going to cash, the check they're going to cash after close of escrow. And the second is the amount of time it's going to take to get there. This is Las Vegas Real Estate Now with local real estate expert Harvey Blankfeld. Thanks for listening. And remember to tune in every Tuesday at 9 a.m. right here on AM 720 KDWN.